right. Well, hey, everybody. It's Grim Green from GrimGreen.com back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again here on Mod Monday. Now, I know I said last week I was unsure if I was going to shoot any videos this week, and I really thought I wasn't going to until I watched Ruby Roo's new FDA video, which I'll link below in the description. I highly suggest you check it out. She inspired me to shoot videos. She said something at the end of that video along the lines of, I'm not going to let the federal government tell me how to run my YouTube channel. And I went, yeah. Fuck yeah, thank you Ruby, I'm all fired up. So, in addition to the GrimGreen.com logo down here, maybe up in this corner, I'm gonna put a Support HR 2058 logo as well. And then moving forward in all of my review videos, I'm gonna say something along the lines of, the FDA wants to ban all vapor products from the market. Please, please join CASA, follow Not Blowing Smoke, and follow the calls to action. Support HR 2058, otherwise everything I talk about in this video won't matter. Today we're gonna to be talking about this little guy right here. This comes from Aspire. This is the Aspire Plato. It's gonna draw a lot of similarities to the Kanger Any box, although it's done much, much better. I just wanna say right out of the gate, I do really like this device. It's not perfect, but I do really enjoy it. In order to get to know it just a little bit better, what we're gonna do is go up close, as we always do. Yeah, quick, short, epi, closey time. All right, yeehaw, what we have here is the Plato from Aspire, sort of an all-in-one tank battery system. The screen does have a gravity sensor on it, so when you flip it, the numbers stay facing you, and it kind of happens so fast that you don't even really notice that it's happening. USB on the bottom, as well as some very clicky up and down buttons. And even though these are labeled, depending on how your screen is, they're gonna be, you know, they're gonna change. This one isn't always, this one is always up and this one is always down no matter how your screen is facing which I kinda like I kinda get used to that this is always up this is always down even if you flip your screen this is still up and this is still down overall the screen is really easy to read if not a little bit foggy it just looks a little bit foggy to me I feel like it could look a little bit more crisp but overall it's easy to read and easy to work with we've got a slightly rounded fire button right here that kind of sits flush with the body of it it is very nice and clicky though i've rather enjoyed using this button five clicks on five clicks off to lock it one two three four five and then it's locked one two three four five and then it's unlocked. So to get to the menu system you have to press the up and down buttons together and it'll ask you wattage mode or TC mode. So if you go into TC mode, it'll ask you nickel or titanium. And then it'll say Celsius or Fahrenheit. And then it'll say, is your atomizer room temp? Yes. Confirm? Yes. And now you're all set up in temperature mode, which you adjust the temperature on this little guy right here, and it'll show you the actual temperature that you're getting right there. But this is not a temperature coil in here. So I'm gonna hold these again we're gonna go back to wattage mode. You want it regulated or bypassed? Bypass meaning that it's just like an unregulated single 18650 device, but no, I want regulated, confirm, yes. And that's really all there is to this menu. It's super easy, super simple to use. I run it in wattage mode really like 90% of the time. So this isn't the drip tip that comes with it. This is just a fancy sort of, I don't know, acrylic pressure fit drip tip that I found that works really well with this Play-Doh. Now everything is covered up by this C-frame here. There's a little window here where you're supposed to be able to see your juice. I never use that because all you do is slide this off and now you can see, oh, there's all your juice right there. Now I have the lung inhale clouds bro cloud coil head in here. It installs through the top, screws into the bottom. The glass is held on by these two rubber gaskets right here. And that's the same way you fill it. You pop this little part open. You have a hole right there for filling your juice and you just blah and fill up your tank. This is a rewrap Samsung 25R in here. That's where your battery sits. There's a little hole on the back so you can Boop. And the sled is pretty clearly marked positive, negative. So your positive goes up, your negative goes down. You put it in like that. And every time you put in a battery, it's going to ask you, do you want wattage mode or TC mode? So if you have wattage mode like you've been running it, wattage mode, 
regulated, confirm, and now you're back to vaping. So I don't want to take this all apart, but it's kind of an illusion. When I first looked at this, I was like, oh, I can just unscrew this and the whole part comes out. Such is not the case. There is a flathead marks right here where you unscrew the top and then the glass comes out and then the coil head comes out and this part right here does not come out. It is permanently affixed to the mod, which means if you're changing juices or changing coil heads, you're going to have to more or less sort of get in here with a paper towel or rinse it very gently under the sink to get this part clean down here. This bottom base does not come all the way out, but let's say we wanted to put a new coil head in here. What we would do is pop this bottom one open, drain all our remaining juice out, pop this bottom one, pop this top one, and drain all our remaining juice out. Then we take the little Aspire tool, which they provide you with this fancy little tool that fits right in here. And you would, I'm not gonna do this right now because I don't want juice everywhere, but you would unscrew this and that pulls this whole thing out. It loosens it all up. You can take the coil head out, you can take the glass out, you can replace the, uh, you know, the rubber gaskets. It comes with spare rubber gaskets, it comes with a charger, it comes with two drip tips as well. Now, like I said, I have the Clouds Bro Cloud set up in there, but you can also set it up to be mouth to lung. And this kind of gives you a better idea of how it works. There's those marks right there for your fancy Aspire tool to go in. You unscrew this out of the base and when you're replacing the coil heads on here what you have to do is unscrew this top part and unscrew this little stopper right here what this little stopper does is stops your coil head from screwing too far down because you have to have a balance it has to be firmly seated in your chimney and it also has to be firmly seated in the base and what this little stopper does is makes that perfectly possible so you unscrew this you unscrew this and then you can unscrew your little coil head and this is the little you know 1.5 ohm 1.8 ohm mouth to lung coil head much less airflow through the center much less airflow through the center but that's basically all there is to it now if you want to put this all back together you find the right spot for this to fall in you screw this down and then you screw your coil head on and those little stoppers will only allow your coil head to go in so far Far. It'll let it go to the perfect spot to be able to screw this back down into the base. Airflow on the Play-Doh comes from the bottom, which you can adjust if you want to shut this down, shut this way down, turn it completely off if you want. I, like I said, I've been rocking the Clouds Bro Cloud setup. It's a direct lung, so I open these airflow holes all the way up. Yeah, so that's really all there is to it. What I'm going to do is pop this back on, pop my drip tip back on. We're going to get out back out to normal view, and we're going to vape this guy. I'm getting really great flavor off of these Asplater, Asplater, what? Aspire Plato coils. I have the direct lung coil in here, which does reduce the capacity of the tank. On the inside, they say when you're using the mouth to lung tank, you get about 5.6 mils of juice in here. And when you're using the sub ohm tank or the sub ohm coil heads in there, they're a little bit bigger around, a little bit bigger diameter. They take up more space inside that tank. So it knocks your capacity down to about four and a half, 4.6 mils. But I find that these coil heads use juice very efficiently. Additionally, you're not rocking this at an insanely high wattage. The mod itself only does 50 watts. So in turn, if you have a 0.5 ohm coil head in here and you're rocking it only at 50 watts, you're not gonna consume as much juice as you would. So that four and a half mil capacity seems to last me a really long time. It's easy to fill. All you do is pop the top, blah, fill it all up. It's nice and easy. This little aluminum cover just pops on and off of here really nice. It's super comfortable to use in the whole, in the hand. I love that I can just grip it, like hold it hard and press the finger with my button because the airflow is on the bottom. And I think it's especially cool when I blow out before I draw in and a little, pff, little puff of vapor comes out the bottom of the mod. Flavor is on point. Performance is on point. There's not a lot that I can fault the Play-Doh with. It's a single 18650, so at 50 watts, if you're running it at the full 50 watts, your battery life is going to be less than impressive, 
decent, but less than impressive. Additionally, on the inside, I don't like that this bottom base part doesn't come out. I wish it did. I don't know how they would do that, but I kind of wish it did. It gets frustrating sometimes when you're switching coil heads or switching flavors and having to clean the residual juice out of that base. I very, very carefully kind of like swiped it underneath my, my faucet on a very low setting. I was like, Bleh. no, okay, and you shake it out and you go, Bleh. and then you, you shake it out and then you get a, a towel and you kind of dry it all up in there. This thing doesn't leak. I know that's the million dollar question. I know that's what everybody's wondering is, does it leak? No, it doesn't leak. Additionally, I get very, very little spit back from this, even using those sub ohm coil heads, which have great flavor, solid, solid, nice swooshy airflow. It's just all around, it's a joy to use. Now, are you gonna need your vape budget hands for this? Not really clicking over to vapenw.com. They have the Aspire Play Doh kit in stock, $49.99, 50 bucks. Yeah, that's not too bad. So let's go ahead and play the Aliens game. In fact, let's change the Aliens game to the FDA game. If the FDA came here and confiscated all of my vape gear, is the Aspire Play Doh kit something that I would seek out and buy? Yeah. Absolutely I would. In fact, I think I'm going to buy another Play-Doh kit in a different color today for my lady friend because they carry it in rose gold. No one let her watch this video. <laughs> they carry it in rose gold. In fact, they carry it in a rainbow of freaking colors. Rose gold and lavender, pink, blue, white, gray, and black. This being the gray one for me because I'm a boy and I like gray things, but she's on this rose gold kick and I think she would really dig a rose gold Play-Doh. But yeah, 50 bucks for this whole thing. All you need to do is supply a battery and juice. Done. Done. That's easy. I've put probably 60-ish mils of juice through this coil head, and it shows no signs of slowing down. I'm still getting great performance, and I'm still getting really great flavor from it. So it is what it is, and it is the Plato kit. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up before I get too rambly. I'll have links down in the description to where you can check it out if you are interested. Don't forget to support HR 2058 and stand up for your right to have a less harmful alternative to cigarettes. Thanks, everybody. Let's keep on vaping. That's enough.